to sitting here quiet with Annie. It's been a busy day. So when she lied down, I thought, well, I'll just come over and hang out with her a little bit. And uh, I got to thinking about the idea of connection and what it, what it really means to have a connection with another being in this particular case, a horse, obviously. Just a little, it's just a little baby still. She's not even two, she'll be two pretty soon. I've been pondering that as well, or, or coming up on her second birthday. She's been here almost a year now. And you think about this idea of connection and why it's so important in horsemanship. And obviously the first is just because it feels cool. You, know, you get to hang around with another being that just says, I like you. I like being around you. It feels good. Um, but the biggest roadblock that some people communicate to me about, about other people, so I don't necessarily have the direct connection with the type of people that these people are talking to. The, the argument that, um, there's plenty of people that just aren't looking for it. They don't have a purpose for it. They don't have a purpose to be able to just sit down or lay down or hang out really quietly. Like if I get even closer and I can touch and and just be snugly close while she's in a very vulnerable position. And they don't have a lot of use for that because they just ride. So they, they get to the barn and they tack their horse up and they just go ride. And this type of connection is not required or not needed or too much work or they don't have enough time for it stuff like that and my response is generally like well to each their own because there's there's no real way you don't go around telling people how to live their lives or what to do or how to get something better than what they they think they have kind of idea because you think you have something better it's kind of a, a bit of an arrogant approach to say well I'm better because I can lay next to my horse or I can sit next to my horse and, and do this. But in my experience so far, I feel that because I can do this, um, it doesn't mean I'm going to be able to ride any better. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be able to accomplish some task with a horse better. I mean, it might, but what I feel it brings to my world, uh, in regards to if we were just to go into the horse riding part. I'll talk about the rest maybe in a little bit, but just the horse riding part. There's a, there's a guy that uh, on the internet um, who had gone out for a ride and he fell off his horse, horse bucked him off, and then just left. And he was 10 miles or something like that away from home and he had to trudge through the snow and he'd, he'd broken a rib. Great guy great horseman, all that kind of business. Um, but he had a, a horse that just left him. And I think for me, for me, when I think about situations like that or situations where you're even just falling off in the arena, um, I want my horse to continue to think about being near me. <laughs> Hopefully not leave. Um, and, and, and to not think that life away from me is better than life with me. Hopefully that makes sense. Because in a lot of cases, maybe not in that case, I don't really know. I'm not going to say I know for sure. But the idea that the horse wanted him off his back for a spooking reason. I don't know. I'm not going to make any assumptions about anything. But I would like to hope that my horses will be calmer or, um, and it's really hard to, you can't, you can't have a same situation twice. And, and, in, and in a way you, you, you kind of have that one situation. You say, well, it's because I had a connection with my horse that they didn't buck me off. Right? It's because I had the connection with the horse that didn't leave. But I think in the end, we're just, we're, we're stacking the deck in our favor. We're, 
we're setting up a situation to be that much better. It, I think that is an objective thing that we can take. It may be subjective. We could probably argue it a little bit. But I think that if, if we can convince them that to be around us is safe, it's comforting, they feel like they can sleep. I mean, it's a very vulnerable place to be. I'm talking now. You know, I'm still touching and sort of grooming in a way, right? She's comfortable enough. All my horses are, for that matter. And I take great value from that, not just because, so now we'll get into a bit of a subjective, my opinion or my feelings. I really enjoy this. This brings a lot of peace to me. Um, it brings my confidence up when I'm around them because I've built many, many times of doing this. And in the end, it translates over to that riding, to the activities, to the scary things, the scary places that I think I'm going to go. Maybe not with Annie. I mean, she's got a few years before she should be really ridden, especially if we're going to go up to scary places. But if we're just walking, you know, she might get afraid, but she'll still think, I better stick, we better stick together. We're good buddies. We're a team. We're a herd. Um, you know, while here, I provide some safety. You know, we got Mr. Wild in the background sort of watching on. Um, so we're, we're a herd, but we're a very close herd right now. So I think that to everybody who sort of approaches me and say, well, they've got some friend or some coworker or somebody at their bar. This is like, they just never do this. They see no value in it. Um, I, I think that the, a very simple discussion can be had by saying, but don't you want to stack the deck in your favor? Don't you want to set things up, hopefully, to be that much, probably that much safe? I mean, we're not guaranteeing having this connection is going to make it safer, but there must be some indicator, some way to measure that of amount of times that things happen. So sort of like taking a set of data and saying, well, this many times she was scared, this many times she left, this tiny time she didn't leave out of those times. And I believe that the percentage that they stay close, they want to be close, they don't want to leave, they're even willing to go into trouble with you, uh, is higher because of a connection in the quiet times as well. I think she's going to get up pretty soon, but maybe she'll lie down like Luke did. I don't know. I'm not really sure. But she is quiet. So we'll spend some time just hanging out together close like this. I, I love it. Uh, it allows me time to think. Usually at times like this, I'll sit and think. Um, I'll have a little ponder about stuff. Yes, you can lie down if you want to. You're okay. She's kind of half there. She, she's either half thinking about getting up or half thinking about lying down. And I, it would be a, it'd be a really cool thing to have her just flat out lie down. If she gets up all the same, it's okay. It just means she's finished that time and she'd like to get up. But we've been like this for a little while now and all the time that I've been taking this video, plus some. So I'd say, yeah. Even, so say for example, even if it didn't translate into riding or going places, how can you go wrong with this? How is, how is this not something that you could make a goal out of? How hard is it? You know, it should be, it should be one of those things, in my opinion, it should be just a, a must have, but many people don't. So I'd just say, but why wouldn't you? you if you have a dog, you want to just sit on the couch with your dog. If you have a cat, you want your cat just to come sit with you, you know, for a regular domesticated animal. Why not a big thousand? Well, I don't know if Annie, Annie's probably like 700. Why not a 700 pound animal? <laughs> Obviously, when she gets up or if she were to lie down, her front legs will flick out a little bit. I'd have to be quite aware of that. If she were to go get up, yeah, I might need to move a bit. Yeah, it's things to think about, of course. Much bigger than dogs.
But at the same time, I'd probably kind of hope that maybe she won't step on me, but don't ever count on your horse saving you or trying to keep you from danger. It's, don't count on that. It'll happen, but don't count on it. But if she'd go and just flop over. She's thinking about it. She just can't quite get it done. And she's very sleepy. So, yeah, I think at the very least, it's a fantastic goal to have. If you've got a horse, you see them lying down, hang out with them a little bit. Even if I were to leave before she got up, it'd be even better. She'd be like, oh, it was nice while he visited. But either way, it doesn't matter. I still have this time, still have these moments where I can just reach over and just say, it's okay. We're best friends, so you can fall asleep. I know. Keep an eye out. Just a peaceful little girl. And just to think, you know, less than a year ago, she was completely feral. Completely feral. This, this little Annie came from some range somewhere uh, into some pen for a couple of weeks, onto a trailer, onto my trailer, and then here. And this is now her life for now. And that's amazing to me. We can, we can have horses become so peaceful. And it brings a lot of peace. So that's kind of what I'm getting to as well. It's not, it's obviously not just for them that we can be a good leader and a protector, a trustworthy friend, but there is a great sense of accomplishment and some empowerment to be that for not really a helpless animal but you know they're prey animals and they they consider their lives to be you know in a big danger uh, most of the time I'm gonna try to shuffle just a little Hopefully Annie just stays conked out. We'll move slowly because oh, I can't do it. Oh. She's up. It's <laughs> gonna try to move again. It was adorable the way she was all laid out like that. Well, thanks for the rest. Hey. Oh god, that's really tickly. So that's Annie and our relaxing time together. It's been good. She's like, you getting up too or what? That's it. <laughs> I'll leave you guys with that. Something to think about. Something to ponder. Thanks, Annie. It was wonderful. I'll see you later. And everybody else, hope you all having a great day. Oh, she's one scratches now. I'll give her some scratches.